What's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to Horror Hangout, Shopcast, all that jazz. We got episode number 83, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about that for a little while. So buckle up, folks. This ought to be a wild one. I'll be honest. I uh, forgot how much I enjoyed this movie. <laughs> I was, I was, I'll be, dude, real, real honest. I, I, I was excited when you mentioned it. And then when time came to like schedule time to watch it, I was like, ah, I just don't really know if I want to watch it. I've seen it enough times. Maybe I could just go off my memory. I've seen the movie probably 12 times. And I started watching it, but Carissa was interested in watching it. So I was like, all right, cool. I'll sit down and watch it with her. And so we watched it. And I was like, damn, I, it was, we'll talk about it. But yeah, I enjoyed it way more than I remembered enjoying it. I knew I liked the movie, but it was less laborious to get there. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what I felt. I felt like it's going to be a long, you know, situation and it turned out that that wasn't the case at all so it was it was kind of cool to get back uh into that movie and that story because it is uh it's a wild one so josh you picked it out let everybody kind of know if you're unfamiliar with this movie first off dude spoiler alert this movie came out like 47 years ago <laughs> we're gonna talk about it a little bit but um josh let's let, let's let's give everybody like a quick rundown on what this movie's about because i know you have a little bit of knowledge on it uh sort of i mean it's like well, based on, I mean, you, you're the one that picked it out, and you're the one that went and got found that little uh, yeah. essay thing on it. So you got some knowledge. You don't have to give us a... Well, no, you know what? No, yeah. give us a deep note. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, the plot is is not that... There's not that much to the plot. It's, no, there's really not. It's You're yeah. more or less on... The journey's there. Is The destination doesn't really matter. You're, this one's a journey movie. Yes. It's more of an experience than it is a, like a driving story. Um, yeah. so it, it's basically, it, it's based off of a book by Hunter S. Thompson and it's basically about Hunter S. Thompson. He uses a different name, but it's basically him. He's dressed just like him and he acts, talks just like him and it's him and, and this other guy that they're driving from, uh, LA to Los Angeles through the in desert. Los, wait, LA or, to Vegas, mean, right? The Vegas, I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, I was making sure. I was like, wait, did I not know this? Like, no, 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 no. Yeah, they're going to uh, Las Vegas, of course. And it's just the journey there and then the mishaps there <laughs> and back. <laughs> yep. uh, I mean, for anyone who doesn't know, it's just basically a drug trip. Hunter S. Thompson was known for copious doing amounts copious. of yeah narcotics Every, folks and just mixing everything uh constantly dude uh, i'm gonna blame this movie for part of my 20s because <laughs> when i was watching this i was like oh shit is that where i got that idea like at least four times like oh my goodness bro i've done most of what they did in this movie so it was a uh, really? trip down memory lane you've done a uh, adrenochrome no but i want to <laughs> uh I was shocked when he said Adrenochrome because I had forgotten that that was something they talked about in this movie, and I've only known about that from Joe Rogan. Oh, uh, yeah. 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 That makes sense. But uh, no, I haven't done Adrenochrome, <laughs> but I have done Ether. You know what? Why am I talking about this right now? Uh, <laughs> I've done I've done Ether. I've done lots and lots of cocaine, lots of LSD, heroin. What's the other stuff that they had? They had some other stuff that was cool. Yeah, the they had rum and tequila. Yeah, the Ether you mentioned... Yeah, and I want to say there was yeah one other one we're forgetting about. It was like another medical thing that they had. It was like a it was like a medical drug, not ether. It was something else. Uh, Did you say acid? Yeah, LSD. Anyhow, so the movie is watching that essay that you sent because I, I watched it. By the way, I usually okay, cool. don't get around to it, but I finally remember to watch this one. <laughs> so I, I well, it's not that I don't want to. I just forget. <laughs> if I don't do it like real quick afterwards, it's almost certain that I'm not going to get around to it. But I watched it today. And they were explaining how they got the shots and the ideas for how to act while they were under certain uh, substances. Yeah. And I got to say, man, I don't know if that comes. Did they say it came from a medical journal? Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember either. But wh whoever wrote that down was clearly had had experiences with the drugs because yeah. it was accurate. And I was like, oh, that's funny because... Uh, God, I can't. The liquid with Chris is driving me nuts, dude. The liquid yeah. that they were taking and huffing. I've done that. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty accurate, man. This movie is the closest I've ever seen, besides maybe, uh, what's the one that I hate? 
the movie I hate with the Requiem with the hair. for a Dream. Yeah, Requiem for a Dream and this movie are the closest I've ever come to seeing real experiences. Uh, just very different ends of the spectrum as far as yeah. the vibe and stuff. Uh, except yeah. that I, I really thought that Midsummer had a good uh, explanation of psychedelics because they were like holding their hands on the ground, the grass is coming through their hands. That'll happen if you're watching. Like I expect next weekend to see some grass through my hands. So, um, yeah, yeah, it was, was a this accurate was depiction. Whereas, well, like, it's it started fun. It definitely yeah, ended yeah, real dark. It, it, yeah, it definitely has some some dark moments, but it's a more lighter depiction of it. Whereas Requiem for a Dream is just I can't the, even watch it. The dude. worst, the worst about addiction and not being an addict. It doesn't do much for me. But yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, this yeah, one, that's one of the few movies I is, just won't watch. Yeah, this is easier to get through than than something. Yeah. Well, yeah, because like you're like these guys are out of their fucking mind, dude. When you when you're driving and he pours the coke on the thing and he's like, <laughs> he's like, look what God just did to us. He's like, it wasn't God, it was you. I knew you were a narc or whatever. I was like, oh God, I've actually had that happen. I was driving down I-10 with my boy Richard and he was smoking a cigarette and for whatever reason I thought it was smart to pour some coke on a CD tablet and he rolled the window down about I don't know four inches and it just went <laughs> all in the fucking vehicle. And all my eyes and shit, it burned like hell. Uh, oh, it was not fun. It was the only time I did coke and I didn't have fun doing it. Uh, I'm the only one that's not these stories, folks. So, nope, yeah. I have none of yeah, those sorry. stories. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, buddy. Gonzo yes. journalism, folks. <laughs> Let's talk about that for a minute. But that's anybody knows knows what Gonzo journalism is. That's where this this is where that term comes from. And basically, it's when you put yourself in the story, or if you're writing a story about yourself, but you also talk about the story and speak about yourself in first person. It's strange. It's a very weird. You like narrate it while you're also telling the story and talking mm-hmm. about the story. It's kind of strange, but it's uh, it's very guerrilla. Uh, you take your camera and you go. It's 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 not cut and dry, man. I, I was I would almost say that there's not really a definition to it. Almost. Well, it's there's also a. Few- a- bit embellished too isn't it yes and yes 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 yeah. yeah yes thank you for pointing that out because yes that is true like it, it would be like mm-hmm. whereas i jumped off the second story of the tattoo shop landed on a van and broke two of my ribs right but if i was telling that story in gonzo journalism i would talk about how i jumped off of the top of a fourth story building and landed on a van and crushed the van in and like scared to shut some people i probably would not mention that i broke my ribs when in reality it was a lot more simple. I jumped off this thing acting like an idiot and broke two ribs. Like it, it's it's kind of cool though. I mean, you got to take it with a grain of salt, but it is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm I really enjoyed it this time. We talked about it. We talked about it through text, but you know, for the video, I'll explain it again. Just like I saw this the first time, not knowing who Hunter S. Thompson was, I not knowing. Imagine really what i was getting into at all i mean i knew that it was sort of a trippy movie with johnny depp i mean i'd heard of it yeah and that's why that's that's what that's the only reason i watched it i was just like okay this sure. is kind of a well-known movie i've heard this title uh, it was just on amazon prime or just, i don't know it was, i watched it like seven eight years ago but okay. it was on something and i just clicked on it and watched it and i was like I think I watched it over like three You're like, days. No, I'm good. <laughs> I watched it over like three days. I could only get through like 30, 40 minutes at a time. <laughs> Let's go. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this movie, but I don't. I'm not enjoying this. I don't know what's happening. I can't figure out what the, they're talking about. There's no story. It's just them getting like fucked up and just being stupid the whole movie. And story there is more to it, life. but <laughs> but you really have to know what it is. To, yeah. to really like grasp any of it well so check this um, out chris i, I don't want to be rude i'm gonna let you speak in one second but i gotta mention this because josh said that he didn't know who hunter s thompson was when he first watched it and that kind of made it not as enjoyable right yeah so i i guess it's just another ex- example of how we view movies very differently because the first time i watched it i definitely didn't know who hunter s thompson was mm-hmm. but i was definitely on acid like i would be in james i mentioned to james because he Anybody that's wondering who this guy James is, he's my best friend from, from high school, and uh, he lives in Korea since 2010, and uh, he came into town for the first time in three years. I got to see him a couple of times, and I was telling him about the show. He's like, so what do you got going on this week? I said, well, tomorrow I'm filming my podcast with the fellas, and I'm going to see Batman earlier in the day, and he was like, cool, what's your podcast about? So I told him, and I said, I said, actually, we're doing Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. And I don't know if I've ever told you guys the story about the time that I was taking acid and I put band-aids all over all my posters because I thought the people on the posters were bleeding. No. <laughs> okay. So 
I took a bunch of acid and thought all my guys were bleeding on my post, but I, I wasted like two whole boxes of band-aids, right? Oh my God. Turns out that when I, I've told Krista that story before, but I forgot that James was at my house when that happened and we were watching Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. So whenever I told him last night that that's what we're talking about today, he goes, oh man, remember that time that you got your dad all pissed off because you put uh, band-aids all over your wall? We were watching. He's like, right when it came out on VHS, we went to Blockbuster and your dad rented it for us because we were like 16. And I was like, Oh fuck! That's what that is exactly what we were doing. I forgot it was that movie for some reason in my head. I thought it was Pulp Fiction. No, it was Fear and Loathing Las Vegas. It had just come out on cassette. And my dad rented it for us. Like, what the fuck do you want to watch this for? Here, we took some blotter acid and fucking tripped out, and it was awesome. <laughs> Good times, man. <laughs> Anyways, Chris, what did you think about this crazy, silly ass movie? Yeah, so Sorry. similar to Josh, although being a few years older, I watched this for the first time. I think also in high school, but just come out on DVD. And I want to say I had heard of Hunter S. Thompson. I knew he was a writer and this movie was about him or something like that. But definitely was too young and too inexperienced to know what anything was Mm -hmm. in this movie. So I I remember enjoying it because it was silly and but definitely enjoyed it way more this time because I actually kind of know what's going on and what's you know, why they're reacting the way they are and why they're being so silly and masculine. That's what <laughs> that shit was. Yeah. Masculine. Dude. Yeah. Sorry. I was yeah. just like, I was like, listen to your story. I'm like, yeah, I agree. I think, Oh shit. That's what it was. Uh, yeah, they talked about it a lot. Yes. Yeah, they did. Uh, so when I was in high school, I had a bunch of like punk friends, not a bunch, I had a couple of punk friends, a bunch of metalhead friends, grunge guys and shit. And all the rocker guys in the school, we kind of all grouped together. Cause there wasn't a m- many of any group you know, any subcategory. So uh, there was this guy, Ben Browning that I knew, and he was like this anarcho punk guy. So it's funny. Cause it, it, as we talk about things on these episodes, I start to remember things that I wouldn't have remembered or thought of otherwise. And you guys both saying how you were young and had no idea who he was is reminding me that I, I didn't know a lot about him. I, I'm not going to act as if I did, but I, I did know who Hunter S Thompson was I'm not even sure if I understood that he was a writer, and I certainly didn't understand the significance of what like what he did or anything. No, I but I knew know. who he was, and I knew the the movie was about him and was a true story because of that guy Ben Browning. He uh he he got me involved. He was the same guy that had me watch uh Clockwork Orange and uh, some other movie that I didn't really care for, but the one I ended up liking was was Fear and Loathing. I don't not not that that's relevant to the story at all, but I thought that it was pretty cool that I I kind of. Knew who he was, a guy that did something. I just didn't really, but yeah, I certainly wasn't aware that he was like this folk hero in the hippie yeah. community, sort of mm-hmm. kind of kind yeah, of fella. I didn't either. I mean, my knowledge was was very yeah. small. Just my friends aware my of friends, more than anything. <laughs> oh, sorry, I don't mean to keep interrupting you. It's okay. Um, my friend's dad used to go to Amsterdam, and we used to stay at his house, and he had this really crazy couch. It was it was humongous, dude. It wouldn't even have fit in my office. It was so big, dude. But it was circle. And it was four pieces and you'd pull them apart and you'd have like two people can sit on each piece and it had a back to it. Right. But you could also scoot them all together and it made like a circle. I don't really understand it. It was whoever did it had to be on drugs because like <laughs> it, it, it created like a circle that you couldn't, you had to just lay on it until somebody moved a piece, I guess. I don't know. But that's what we used to do is we used to just take a bunch of drugs and land that big giant fucking couch. as a group of like 10 of us. And, uh, I remember he 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 reminded me, or that movie reminded me of him when I first saw it. I was like, "Yo, this is like, I guess I could say this is Tiffany's dad, man." I was like, "This is weird." <laughs> That's what it felt like. It felt like I knew the guy kind of, but yeah, I always thought it was funny that that was Benicio del Toro. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't even look like him, like at no. all throughout the movie. No, I I love him in this movie. Oh, it's he, amazing. It might be my favorite part because well, because. Hunter S. Thompson or like Johnny Depp, he's like really like kind of just the passive observer for the most part. He's so like just <laughs> spaced out the whole time. Yeah, I mean he's he's it. I mean this is also the prototype for like Captain Jack Sparrow a little bit too. Just like the weird like oh, movements dude, and that. stuff he's doing. I saw that this time as well. I wouldn't have thought yeah. about that until I saw this movie this time. I was like, oh yeah, he was doing that way before <laughs> uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, but. Uh, yeah, he's kind of just kind of passive for the most part. He says funny shit, he really but does. it's really like Benicio del Toro that's like just absolutely nuts. Yeah, um, he's 
so much fun and i love that his shirt's too small for him and his belly's like sticking out <laughs> and just like all those funny things Dude, he's got like i know pew, people like pew king and off of his mustache yeah, for <laughs> like just uh dude, he's so funny so so insane i did want to mention toby mcguire yeah. uh <laughs> when i first saw this i had no idea who he was so yeah, it was sure. like years later that i watched other stuff including spider-man obviously and then, like, on, like, the third or fourth viewing of this movie, after I had seen, t- I was, like, watching it, and I was, like, holy shit, is that Tobey Maguire? Why does he look so fucking weird? But uh, his hair is completely CGI in this movie. Yeah, I forgot I forgot you mentioned that. I kind of wish I, remember, I would have remembered. No, I remember you mentioning that, and I was looking at it, and I, like, I couldn't tell. It, it just looks like a wig. Yeah, it's remarkable that that's not even a wig. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not sure if I believe it to be honest. The, the, well, like, I, I looked I was, it up again to make sure. I was like, I was like, let me make sure I'm not fucking completely retarded. But okay. yeah, it's 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 like a kind of a famous story okay. that he had something going on with his hair, and 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 I think there was like somebody said, why don't you put a wig on? And they decided not. I don't, I don't remember what the reasoning was, but I remember that's why it stuck out in my head that it was such a strange. Yeah, because like, why wouldn't you just put a wig on? Like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, hmm. but uh, yeah, he, I, I, I googled I mean, it right now. That's what I was doing on my phone to make sure again. I was like, let me double check, really? dude. But, yeah, I was double I checking. I need to look that up because 90 CG was like, you well, know, that's kind yeah. of that's that's why it's so crazy because it was this is a mid 90s movie and or I mean, maybe I, late 90s, but whatever. It's 90s. I mean, his hair is like blowing in the wind because they're in the car and stuff. So I was looking like trying to pick it out and I was like, Some, I don't see it. <laughs> somebody on Reddit said that that fool looked like Smeagol. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of does. He looks yeah, like, he's super creepy. In oh, it. man. It's, too, it's weird. See. Yeah. But yeah, but him, Christina Ricci, Gary Busey. I oh, I didn't I didn't know who who they were. And there was someone yeah. else. There, there was another fairly big cameo, wasn't there? Dude, oh, uh, to this. Cameron Diaz is in the yes. elevator. Yeah. Oh, dude, I totally missed that. Yeah, I didn't even the, recognize. She was her. the girl in the elevator, and he was like, uh, "Yeah, she was, she was, she, she was." Like, he was when they got back to the hotel. He was like, "Yeah, she really liked me, or whatever." Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't remember any any of that the first time watching it. Yeah. I'm Under sure the list of the most pointless uses of CGI effects in movie history, this is like number two. And it says, oh, really? uh, it says, Tobey Maguire's contract demanded, that's, I, when I read this, I remembered this being what it was. Tobey Maguire's contract demanded $15,000 in order for him to shave his head in this small role. So the director instead opted for a ball cap and CGI hair instead, uh, j- just because it was more expensive and he thought it was stupid to pay him 15 grand to shave his head so he's like fuck you i'm not giving you the 15 grand i'll spend a 15 grand on cgi hair that's what he did okay i fully sponsor that that's so okay. I, I, that's exactly how i behave so uh all right very irrationally very stupid and uh <laughs> fits perfectly with the movie yes it really does <laughs> yeah i forgot there was a ball cap in, involved but yes it was a ball cap and cgi hair that's what it was interesting but, dude, i heard that's... that a long time ago and it's just stuck with me because it's so weird and dumb like it's just so unnecessary that's, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it's a wild movie. It's... I mean, there's really not a lot to talk about other than did we have a good time? What were some of the funny stuff in it? Because really, it is like you said, thin on plot, but it's a mm-hmm. fun ride. Like if you like wild, weird, eclectic movies, there is no other movie like this. There isn't. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like uh, uh, Natural Born Killers, not as in like same kind of movie, but like if you want a weird Sid and Nancy or uh, What's the two Bonnie, 19, Bonnie, Bonnie and Clyde, Clyde style movie, but you want like outrageous, insane shit. You have to go natural born killers. There is mm. no other movie that runs parallel to that. There is no movie that is just like it or similar. That's how this one is. You want a drug movie that's kind of crazy, but it won't make you depressed because you can also get a similar feeling with, uh, bro, I'm not firing the one you were just talking about. The heroin movie. Anyways, if you want to be oh, depressed, right, you watch right. that one. Uh, if you Park want to Man. watch yeah. Requiem for a Dream. Thank you. Godly, man. Um, so you, there, there are these unique movies that are like pillars of their genre, and that's what this is. There's yeah. a lot of people that would try to copycat this, I'd imagine, and none of them will succeed because it was such a unique uh, movie. Man, I'm sorry, everybody. My memory is just... I've got 75 things in my mind right now, and I, I can't focus. I need to... I need some Adderall, but I don't want to take any Adderall. So I guess, you know, I'm just out of luck. That's okay. One of the things that the video brought up that I was aware of, but that this movie was a failure. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Why was the movie a failure, but the book was so successful? Well, the way he explained it was perfect. And I think, um, well, you kind of like were, were kind of close to that, talking about its uniqueness. Yeah. And I, they talk about it in the video that I, and I kind of agree with that, like the book, you kind of can put your own imagination on it. That's, mm-hmm. yeah, with the movie but like this, you kind of looking want... at it, it's yeah. ugly and dirty and. Well, so, Josh, how did this yeah. compare to your listening to the novel? Because I'm going to read it again, too, but I wanted to ask, how how did this compare to the novel for you as far as how you pictured things? Were you able to picture them even remotely close to this? Because I know you've seen it once before, but did you did yeah. you take that and just put it aside and try to recapture the images? And, and um, like I mean, it's very, very faithful to the book, for one thing. That I've heard. I haven't, heard. I haven't read the book yet, but I've heard that many times. Um, it's like... I mean, it's it's. I mean, a lot of it's word for word. Yeah, a lot of the dialogue straight from the book. Yeah, right? yeah, it's, it's almost all word for word. I think, um, and uh, pretty pretty much every plot point is is exactly. The I feel book. like I don't even want to read it at that point because it's so damn similar. Because that's what I like about the books usually well, is that they're different. The the thing I'm glad I read the book first actually though because what you get with the book is you know things aren't happening as quickly. So you have more time to to digest what's going on. And a lot of this stuff is like in real time, it's happening so fast and they're like slurring their words, even with the subtitles on things are going by so fast. It's like, dude, did you you also put subtitles on? Hell yeah. Yeah, Of course. (laughs) No, I'm a pretty good expert at like listening to junkies talk, bro. Yeah. I had to stop it and be like, Nope, got to do this the other way. I rewound it. Subtitles I, on. I mean, I, was I like thank you. <laughs> I, I, like, I watch sure. most movie, movies with subtitles anyway. Yeah, but this one is definitely a. You See, have I, to. <laughs> I generally don't like them unless it's a foreign movie, and then obviously I need them. But if I don't yeah. need them on, I don't. I want to be able to focus on the what's happening in front of me and not mm-hmm. reading what's what they're talking about. Unless it's a, if it's a super dialogue heavy movie like something Tarantino makes, I'm cool with that because most of what's happening is it needs you need to hear it versus see it. Um, but any kind of movie, like any stuff that I'm watching, horror, B movie shit, like no, nah, I mean I'm, I'm gonna. But right. then you know it's a lot less necessary. Yeah, that's to dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can see that. That's that's a little different. Yeah. Um. But yeah, in comparison to the book, I mean, obviously I'd seen the movie once before, so inevitably, like when I'm seeing certain things, I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of remember this from the movie. So you kind of uh, kind of connected it a little bit because I had seen that the movie first, but yeah there is more a lot more in the book and obviously the dialogue is written so you can understand it a lot better you can kind of process things better you kind of and there's a lot of like ex uh like the narrating like the things that he's saying about the american dream and stuff you just have more time to like there's more of it and there's more time to kind of think about it and ponder it and and uh understand what he's what he's saying so okay um, I think it's worth reading. It's only like six hours. It's a short. Oh, that's pretty book. easy. Yeah, I can do that in like two days. That's a, yeah. that's an easy. I, I mean, listen. I can probably to, do it in one. I listen to most of it in a day. Yeah. yeah. I just picked up a book that Brickin's reading, and I, I I went and bought the audio book so I can talk with him about it. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> cool. Yeah, he's read. Well, that book's a freaking high school kid book. Like yeah. he's only eight. It's yeah. literally it's like it's like, dude, seven hours longer than Fear. It's like seven hours, dude. I couldn't believe he's reading this book. I like got it, and I was like. This is what you're reading? I don't know why I thought any different, but it's like, it's gigantic. He's like, yeah, I just started it. And I'm like, and you're on page 112, huh? All right, I guess I'll catch up. Like, <laughs> thanks, Game buddy. Of, Game of Thrones. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah, dude, he got to meet James. It was really neat, man. I got It was really cool. He got all excited telling him about his book. James was like, so what are you doing right now? Like, what do you like to do? And he's like, well, I play Minecraft a lot, but I've been reading a lot. And he's, I said, well, tell him what you're reading. And he was telling him. And Brickin got like, ultra excited and it was like maybe the most proud i've ever been of him man he was like recalling all this cool stuff it had nothing to do with minecraft it was awesome dude (laughs) like i don't mean to just shit on his best hobby but like it was really nice to hear him talking about about something that was like way above his age group and he was like knowledgeable about it and he had like all this stuff he was recalling and i was just so i I should have fucking just thrown on my phone and started recording it because my mom would love to have seen that but anyways i don't know why i brought that up it just made me really happy that's, cool. that, that's, that's very cool. My my son can tell you anything about Star Wars. That's awesome, dude. No, no, that's, <laughs> shit, that's dude. about Hell it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I, I I loved this movie. I'm glad we watched it. Yeah, and that's about yeah. that, man. I, I'm I I didn't own it. I thought I owned it, bro. I'm so disappointed in myself. Like, why do I not own this movie? Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I bought it because I was like I was 
half I, I listened to the book and then i was like i, I, I kind of enjoyed th that story that was that was interesting and i'm like i think i'll enjoy the movie a lot more what so I went format ahead and bought did you it. get it on it's a blu-ray it's a blu -ray? criterion oh criterion has it mm -hmm. of course they do it this would fit with criterion stuff i think yeah. yeah i think another reason i like it more too for me is uh because i started watching some of the other directors stuff last year uh so terry gilliam i started getting into his stuff last year and so I, what else has he done? Uh, well, we did uh, Brazil. That's also Terry Gilliam. Oh, I think we talked about this fellow. I probably wouldn't be into most of his stuff, huh? Uh, probably not. Um, like he was part of the original um, uh, Monty Python. Python group. Oh. Uh, so he he directed like Holy Grail and a couple of the like, other movies. I can appreciate Holy Grail, and I laugh sometimes watching it. Yeah. I fucking hate English comedy, dude. Like, it's just not for me, man. There's yeah. not near. It's too. It's too much intelligence involved. I don't need all that in my life. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of dry, like, yeah. quippy yeah. humor. The older it's I get, the more I appreciate it. I can admit that. But like, yeah. as a youngster, I hated it. Now I'm kind of like, Ugh, really. And then I start laughing halfway through it. See, uh, I remember seeing Holy Grail in uh, high school and thinking that was the best thing ever. <laughs> see, I watched it in high school and I was mad as fuck at my friends. I was like, you made me watch this whole goddamn movie. I was, I was like, like, the Black Knight was awesome. Everything else sucked ass. I was just like, that bunny is killing everyone. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goddamn. Cemetery sucks. <laughs> I just want to be on record saying that one more time. Okay. Uh, I, I think you would like, I watched The Fisher King the other day for the first time. Yeah, that I haven't one seen that. With Robin Williams and Jeff Yeah, I knew, I knew Robin Williams was in it. Yeah, oh, Jeff Bridges is in it too? Yeah. Yeah, cool. um, it is it's, fantastic. It's dude. really good. It's It's a bit more straightforward. Okay. So it's not as wacky, but I'm kind of interested definitely... in watching Brazil again, like from a different vantage point. But I don't want to accidentally like it, so I haven't put it on. <laughs> Look, dude, I understand how dumb I am. I can, I'm okay with it. Yeah, it but, definitely uh, took me more than one watch of Brazil to be interested in it at all. So I, Fisher King is one you could watch and enjoy, yeah. and. I think I would watch that if I were recommending any Gilliam movies. Well, hell yeah. I got to do some more movie reviews on my on my letterboxed. But uh, did you guys get to watch anything else this week? I just talked about my Fisher King. Yeah. Oh, was, you, was, you just watched great. that. I thought I missed that whole part where you said you watched it this week. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was, just a, it, was, it was just a couple of days ago. Nice. I've uh, been wanting to watch it and just figured now with fear and loathing and for sure give it a shot um so megan actually watched it with me and nice we both really liked it and it was good i know she's a big robin cool. williams fan and yeah he's great in it and you see his dick oh Who's yeah dick? <laughs> robin williams what yep <laughs> is it funny yeah yeah it's funny <laughs> he's he's uh, like a crazy homeless man in the movie yeah fuck yeah sounds awesome yeah he's he it's it's a great movie um, so all right. Sorry, I wanted to do that before I forgot. I'm put, putting something on my screen on Letterboxd so I could do it after the we done. Oh, okay. Uh, only other thing I watched was the two Giallo movies that we talked about. Nice. Corso nice. and uh, what's the other one called? The Yeah, that your, one. Your vice is a locked room and only I have the key. <laughs> so I, I went ahead, well, I went ahead and bought that. Did you know what the, the original name for Torso is? Oh, it's like, yeah. Something could, long and ridiculous, too. Yeah, most of them have really long titles. Yes. Yeah, fucking stupid but um, um yeah, i yeah, forgot i did it. watch torso the, the other day too did you did you enjoy it i liked it i didn't like it as much as josh i'm yeah no, I, do i love torso but i didn't like it as much as josh did it's yeah. like it's in my top three maybe top five definitely top five for sure maybe top three jellos but mm -hmm. josh really 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 liked it which i'm happy but it, it's not my favorite one um, yeah yeah but, it's just, but it's really good though it's very good objectively it's not like a, a masterpiece or anything well, you know i don't but... care about that <laughs> but it's exactly what I wanted from that type yeah. of movie. Yeah. Sometimes like, you can watch a movie on a Tuesday. Yeah. If you had just waited till Wednesday or Thursday to watch it, you get a completely different opinion. So yeah, who that's knows? Very if you true. watch I'm this gonna... from a different vantage point, you may not have liked it at all. Who knows? Yeah, I probably was just in the right mood for it, too. Yeah. And, I, was, but... I was stoked that you were super excited about it. I'm not going to front, dude. I, I, I just didn't feel the same way, but I was very excited. I, I love yeah. it when you like a movie that much. That's something that I like already, that I was already a fan of before you watched it because that's rare usually we either discover mm -hmm. something together or i watch like, like something a lot and you 
are like, yeah, I can appreciate it or whatever, or even if you like it, but it's never that level of excitement. So I, I was, I was stoked, but I just, uh, yeah, I was no, a little surprised that's... though. That's literally what it was. Was yeah. it? I was just like, what? Wow, really? Yeah, no, I think I would just like I wanted to watch that kind of a movie, and like I, I no. like all, I like the Argento movies and stuff, but I always feel like oh, I wish there was a little they're, bit. They're they're a little more. overrated. Um, I, I think, anyways. Like I really like uh, Ten Embrace. I think my favorite. Ten Embrace is badass. It's got a lot of really interesting kills and stuff in it. I feel like it's a yeah, little. I'm gonna end up watching fucking Ten Embrace tonight, dude. I haven't seen the movie in a while. <laughs> yeah, I need, uh, I need to watch a few of those still. Oh, dude, like all that stuff is on Tubi too. That's the dude. Tubi's part. so badass. I love Tubi. Yeah, I I started Blood and Black Lace, but nice. Just Maddie started crying and go figure. Oh, yeah, whatever. I got like fifteen minutes into it and had to turn. Dude, it off. the more I like, the more I use Tubi, the more it's like my go-to platform now. I'll be honest. Like the past week or so, I've just been going through and like I have like fifty things on my watch <laughs> no, my, list on my, Tubi. Yeah, now. my like, Tubi watch list have... is absurd. They actually have a ton of like, dude. They're stuff. great service, man. I, I'll yeah. deal with the commercials, and they time them really well. I've been paying a lot of attention to their commercials, and when they have them come on, dude, it's got to be curated, man, because it's perfect. Their their timing is really what really well done. Yeah, but uh, that's true. I watched a couple of things. I watched Torso as well. Um, I also watched one called Slap Face, which is a stupid name but an oddly good movie. Um, and then I also watched one called The Last Matinee. The last matinee is, let's see, I want to say it's French, but it might not be. Came out in 2020. Okay. Let's see. Sorry, I should have pulled this up before. Where the fuck is it? Oh, it's, yeah, okay, yeah, it is it's Spanish. It's Spanish, like Spain Spanish. Okay. Anyways. The, the synopsis is real easy. As a crazed killer begins to pick off audience members attending the last showing of a horror film in a small downtown cinema. Meanwhile, the only person to notice that something strange is going on is the projectionist's daughter. Okay, so it's a real simple plot, right? Okay. But it's a foreign film, so it's going to have a different feel than an American movie, which is right when you start watching it, you can tell that it's not from America, which gives it a, at least for us over here, it gives us something a little more fresh, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was watching it, I was watching it. It's not very long, it's like 90 minutes, 92 minutes, something like that. And I'm like, okay, it's kind of boring. What they were doing is they were setting you up for a... a I didn't realize it until after I watched the whole movie that the first third of the movie is like... God damn it, I don't know if I should say this because it's going to ruin the movie. Do y'all have any desire to watch a Spanish horror movie? Or can I just... Well, is it, is it good? I liked it. So I'll just... It's real. Oh, man. There's a lot of character building in this movie that's very much appreciated by the time you get to the end of the movie. I'll put it like okay. that. It was a cool movie. They have good good effects, good kills, really good kills. And there's a part in the movie, dude, I don't get grossed out often or easy. There's a part in this movie. I believe it's on Prime, by the way, if you want to watch it. Uh, uh, Shudder and... Oh, it might Shutdown. be Shudder. Okay, I have Shudder through, through Prime. <clears throat> Excuse me. There was one part in this movie where I literally... Like sat straight up in my chair and like gagged, and I was like, I was like, oh, what the fuck? Like, and it wasn't particularly graphic. It's just something this guy did, and I was like, there's no way this is fixing to happen. And then it happened, and I was like, the the audio was really well done because I was like, oh, oh god. <laughs> so, but it's a quick movie, man. If you're if you're in the mood for a horror, I, it feels like an older movie. Is what I was trying to say at the very beginning is that it feels. Not maybe not 80s or 70s or anything, but it feels like it could have been made in the early 90s or something. Uh, they did a good job with this one, man. It, it feels like an old school movie, and I, I really do like it. I'm gonna put it on my letterbox. Uh, I might watch it again and write down some stuff and do an actual like uh, formal review of it. I'm fixing to start doing formal reviews of movies again. I need to get some. I found some stuff on my channels today that's gonna help me get viewership. I think I'll tell you all after the things over with. Uh, I showed you part of it, but I found a bunch of stuff when I was going through like the innards of a youtube channel mm. <clears throat> but yeah i watched a few things man it was all horror stuff most of it was foreign it was real strange most of the stuff i watched this week had subtitles because it was all foreign with the exception mm. of fear and loathing of course yeah cool um also anybody out there go watch the last matinee if you like that kind of if you like slashery 
stuck in a place trying to get away from movies, man. It's a it's a cool flick, and the people that made it did it on a very small budget. And it's it's neat. I wanted I just wanted people to support it. It's all, uh, Chris. What you got for us this week, my man? So I my last pick. We switched it up. Oh yeah. So I'm hoping you got your copy of Old Boy in. I did. I showed y'all, remember? Okay, cool. Yeah. So. Old oh, Boy. we watched Old Boy. Yeah. Let's Please. go. Let's go. I got a 4K of that bitch now. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. yeah. To watch it. Dude, good choice, sir. Yeah, it's been a few years, I think. It's since been I've a seen while it. since I've seen Old Boy. Yeah, and I've yeah. definitely seen more Korean movies. I think oh, that was my first korean movie it's like my first or second two i think man it's yeah. real early in my korean well because that's the one we all heard about and we're like what is mm-hmm. this movie about yeah that was the crossover movie dude yeah, it was, was like what and that one and then uh i think mother was pretty good it got a lot of attention over here is it mother which one no no no, no. the wailing i think got more attention over here maybe uh like i would say like the host the stuff host. like that the host was one i love that movie man that's a that's a gem of a movie man oh yeah uh ah, what the fuck? I need a picture <laughs> spinner, dude. I can't sit still. Uh Steven's coming back on and we're doing uh <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> Let's go. And and we're also gonna do our spoiler talk for Texas Chainsaw Massacre twenty twenty two because I I chose him specifically because he's not a horror fan. Mm-hmm. And he felt some kind of way about the first couple of movies. And I thought yeah. that would be a really interesting person to bring back and talk about the new one. Cause he doesn't care like the other people care. So I was like, yes, yeah. let's do that. Cause he was like, how long is it? I was like, dude, like 84 minutes. He's like, yeah, let's pick two movies. Then I was like, all right. I was like, I'll, I'll send you a picture. I sent him this. And he goes like, what in the fuck? I was like, you can say no. He's like, no, bro. I'm game. I was like, yes. <laughs> That'll be but, fun. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that conversation. Right? Yeah, <laughs> shit, I am. I just want to hear him fucking tell me how terrible it is. I can't wait. <laughs> well, I, I, I like listening to the old uh, Texas t- Chainsaw conversations, too, because he likes the second one the best. <laughs> this shit blew my mind, bro. I like convincing him of things because I'm really good at selling shit. So he's always – I do it to him. Every time he doesn't like something, I convince him otherwise yeah. halfway through the episode. I mean, like, fuck I think, this. <laughs> do what? I think the only one you didn't turn him on was House of a Thousand Corpses, I think. Did yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's pretty hard to turn somebody onto that one if they're not already into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but uh, yeah, every single other one, like, by the end of the podcast, you had turned him into at least appreciating. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the best one was the very first one, though, when I got him to do the uh, WBC Halloween oh, yeah. special. He was like, there's no way. That movie's fucking awful. By the end of it, he's like, this is the greatest fucking movie ever. <laughs> I was like, let's go. You know they're making a sequel to that? Yeah, I heard. Yeah. yeah. Or the WNUF. Is that what it is? WNUF? I think right. so, yeah. Halloween special. <laughs> Welcome to the fucking Channel 3 News. It's Halloween, people. Uh, Hell yeah, man. Are y'all coming over Saturday? I will not be able to. I'm, no! I'm, I'm really busy this this whole weekend. That's two in a row we haven't been able to come over and hang out. <laughs> no, I was at the last one. Were you? Yeah. I thought you missed the last one. You missed something recently. I don't fucking know. Don't listen to me, dude. Well, uh, last one in January because of my anniversary. But Oh, that's right. That was January. Man, time flies, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, Christopher, are you going to come and hang out? Uh, wow, yeah. that's weird sounding. <laughs> I mean, I that is my name. Is it, is it? It is Christopher, right? Yeah. Man, I've never yeah. called you that. That felt dirty. Christopher, <laughs> you stop that, Randall. Good. Yeah, I hate it. Oh. <laughs> only, only, only Megan calls me that. <laughs> Dude, Krista calls me Randy when she's mad at me. No, wait. Yeah. Yeah, she does. I can I can hear her saying mm-hmm. it like, Randy. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've definitely heard that. Randy. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> um, cool, man. Yeah, you can bring the baby and Megan if you'd like, if they want to okay. come. You know yeah, I mean? y'all, they're always wor- invited. Megan's working all weekend, um, but I could probably go after. We'll see. Okay. Um, I, just, I just can't imagine missing this fight after watching the press conferences and Dude, there's a whole group of people that think this is like a fake beef. I just, I fucking people are so dumb. I mean, I, I think they definitely, I mean, Colby's fake in itself. Yeah, but like, and, Jorge hates that fool. It's real clear. Yeah, like, I, I, I don't think it's fake, but I'm sure they're they're playing it up. But Maybe they're, they're, they might be playing it up, but, but man, dude, I couldn't believe it. When I watched the press conference, everybody was chanting Colby, and I just felt really weird. 
I yeah, was surprised, but, dude. Nobody was cheering for Mazadol. I couldn't believe it, dude. Yeah, in my weird. fucking mind. He's really popular. Like I know. I wouldn't. And they're in Kobe. Florida. Wait, are they, uh, I think they're in Florida. Maybe that's why. Well, Jorge's well, from well, Miami. Jorge's though. from Miami too. Yeah, I don't know. That is weird. Dude, this is on. I can't believe they fucked this up, dude. This is Jorge Masvidal versus Kobe Covington on March the fifth, and they couldn't put it in Miami. It's. 3-5. They couldn't put it in Miami. 305 Miami. You couldn't put it in 305. What are you doing, UFC? When I heard that this was on March 5th, I literally was like, hell yeah, this is gonna be a Miami show. This is gonna be crazy. And then they're like, in Fort Lauderdale. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh anyways. I never would have thought of that in my entire Neither. life, but <laughs> I listened to too much cocaine fueled rap music. <laughs> 305 in my yayo. Anyways. <laughs> Kids, stay in school. Don't do drugs. <laughs> Sell them if you need to. Y'all heard about Cain Velasquez, huh? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. I so got yeah, in my what? first internet beef. Oh, like really? with another YouTuber. Oh, wow. Yeah, because he was blaming the fucking judge for all this stuff happening. And I was like, you're an idiot. It's Kane's fault for shooting the guy. And he's like, do what? No, I was like, yeah, I mean, he definitely did something he should well, have like, done. Did I, did I agree that I... with the judge let this guy out? Nope. Did I agree with the guy having... No, it's all stupid. But it's still yeah. not anybody's fault but Kane's fault that he shot somebody like how can you blame anybody else for that and I got like fucking just annihilated on this guy's page for this right and he's like and I was like and he's like you've had 145 comments on my videos and all of them are arguing and so I was like it's because you say a lot of dumb shit (laughs) and then I was like but don't you say you antagonize people on purpose to get the engagement you're welcome and then I emailed him later because he's from Austin. I was like, yo, anytime you want to talk about this shit on Zoom, holler at your boy, bro. None of these motherfuckers want to do that with me. None of yeah. them. I'll do it with yeah. any of them. I don't give a fuck. And I like this guy. Let's, let's not get it twisted. It's Jesse on fire. Anybody that likes MMA, go check him out. He's a cool dude. But he's very much like I lean left. He leans right. We're, we, we have a lot in common with our personality, but our views are quite a bit different. So I like the guy. He's a cool dude. But he says a lot of dumb shit. And I'm positive that he would say the same about me. So it's not a big deal. I don't take it personally. But I emailed him. We might be doing some kind of uh free cane merchandise to help s- send him some money so i might yeah. be making some free cane knife crime shirts that are 25 dollars uh and 15 dollars of each shirt goes to cane i don't that means i make zero dollars i will not profit from his situation but i will absolutely make shirts and sell them for that price if uh people want them so i've already got the design made up i'll send it to y'all later in text you can see it tell me if you like it cool cool but yeah that's a but, uh, that's a crazy ass story it was fucking the- gnarly dude the thing I initially sent, I mean, was right after, so I guess it was pretty close. I guess it wasn't his daughter that it was, like a yeah. I heard it was his son, bro, a, like a little a boy. Relati- well, I thought, yeah, it was like a relative, not no. It's his son. Was it his son? I thought it's it his was... kid. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like everybody saying something? That... Uh, you know, I'm not gonna say with certainty that I could be wrong, but I'm hearing multiple places that it's his son. But okay. your nephew could make perfect sense too so you said nephew and i was like shit i didn't think about nephew so maybe they are wrong and it is his nephew but dude it doesn't matter who it is man like i should be in prison for touching a kid for sure yeah but what everybody's like yeah but kane was protecting his family i'm like no 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 kane is He's not protecting his down. family <laughs> yeah dude like like yeah. they're like yeah well, wouldn't you do that for your kids i'm like no so what so so the, now i'm in prison and my kids don't have dad around yeah that's real fucking smart I was like, when are we going to accept responsibility for our actions? It's always this nonsense shit. I get that you're super mad. Rah, rah, rah. Go you. Yeah, you big tough guy. Like, fucking, that's what this guy's ch- channel is all like. I'll fucking throw someone off a bridge of that shit. And blah, blah, blah. No. <laughs> no, you fucking wouldn't, dude. You might fight the guy. Maybe I'll fight the guy. I'll catch a misdemeanor and take some a couple weeks in jail. But I'm not shooting at somebody. He, he shot the wrong person, dude. Like, what are we talking about? What would have happened? Would, you, would, they, would they still be cheering for this guy if he had shot at this dude? And a stray bullet hit and killed a kid, like would that still be something y'all are happy that he did? It's yeah, was, lunacy, man. Yeah, I was kind of surprised how everybody so quickly jumped on the. Like, I get it. Like, I thought Kane was the one that got shot at first. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's like I, I, I get the. Yeah, like it's you're a child molester, of course. Fuck him. Yeah. But, Oh, dude, I got told so much mean shit yesterday <laughs> on the comments. They're like, I'm so, it breaks my heart that you have kids. And I was like, well, you're clearly an idiot. So it doesn't matter what you think. I don't care. Fucking yeah. Nimrod. Like, well, I mean, I, I asked somebody, I said, so are you telling me that you don't understand that he was let out on bail? So first off, he had to put a bunch of money up. 
Second, he has to go back to court and face a jury, which he's going to get a lot of time for this. Third, he was supervised, okay? So I don't know all the specifics, but I do know that he was let out with, with bail with a court date scheduled and supervised. That's the only stipulations they would not let him out otherwise, right? Do I like that they let him out? No, but he was supervised and they he, he was going to prison, dude. Do, 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 do none of these people ever watch a single bit of TV? Because the first thing that's going to happen to this guy in prison is he's going to get fucked up. Yeah. Like, he's not going to go to prison and have a good time. Like, let him go get his prison time. He's going to probably get murdered, dude. Like, why you got to go shooting at him? Hit the wrong guy. Now you're in prison. He's out. It doesn't even make sense, dude. Like, that guy's out, and Kane's in fucking jail now. And Kane's got no bail. Fucking hell, dude. Like, can you think before you act? Like, I understand being emotional. I get it, man. I've got kids. Like, I, I would love to say if somebody touched my kid or y'all's kids, I'll murder them. I'll cut their fucking head off. That does no good. It does no good. Like, yeah. you have to be more mature than that. You have to be able to take your emotions, put them in check, let the process handle. Now, if the guy, if now if you go to court and somehow this guy got let go, all right, I might murder somebody like that. Like, if, the, if we went yeah. to court and he and it was proven he did it and somehow he got let go, that might be the time where I talk to my wife and go, is it worth me going to prison because I'm feeling like killing this guy? Yeah. But dude, you they weren't even anywhere near that step, dude. They hadn't even gone to trial yet. Like this guy's gonna get fried for this shit. Like the yeah. only thing I can hope is that I hope that this, somehow he gets put in the same jail as Kane. At that point, <laughs> like I mean, that would be, you know, the best case. Well, I guess maybe not actually fucking if he's shooting somebody, I'm sure he'll fucking whoop his yeah, ass. I'll, I don't know. It's so stupid. Yeah, I was gonna say it's it's one thing, like if you would have caught him in the act completely and just different shot him, completely different. He probably the wouldn't go to jail for that. Right, that's self defense. Like you're defending. Well, sim- the, it's temporary insanity. Person- if something like that happens, you walk in there, you have. It's like if you catch your wife cheating on you, you have there's like a two second period of time where like if you walk in and you see it, you go ah, bam. You almost can't go to jail for that. It's the moment you have time to think about it. You that changes everything. Yeah, so it's if you, not premeditated. Yeah, he definitely it was like self defense. So this is <laughs> I've always tried around looking for him and. And yeah, you're not really defending anyone. Well, when you're he shot him in the him middle down. of a fucking intersection yeah. at like two in the afternoon. Like, I just you, you couldn't have done made a stupider choice. Like, I'm empathetic to the situation. I really wish he was home and safe and happy, and that his kid was safe and happy, or his nephew, or whatever. Right? And it's not my fault that you made a boneheaded choice, dude. I'm not. I mean, I feel empathetic, but that's about as far as it yeah. goes. I feel empathetic, but I also go. Yeah, you did this to your kids, man. Good job. Now you're not there for your child, and they wish you were. And like now you're the you're the major breadwinner. Did you think about Daniel Cormier? He's like your best friend. Now he's fucking probably super fucking stressed out, depressed, and sad. Like it's a selfish move, man, to do that shit. All these guys out there think they're Captain America, and they're fucking not. Most of these people that talk like this don't have a family, so they don't know what it would be like to put yourself in that position. Like if something happened to Nathan or Natalie or Maddie, you think I wouldn't want to do that? Of course I would, and I'm not even their dad. But y'all are so close to me, I was close to, that I would want. No, what I could do is go fucking park at y'all's house with you and sit outside with a fucking shotgun, and wait for some asshole to come up and do something stupid. But you can't, yeah. you can't go out and do that. So what? Now I can't be y'all's friend anymore because I went and did something gnarly and murdered somebody. Now y'all gotta look after my fucking kids because I'm in prison. Like <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Yeah. Like it just doesn't make any sense. I, I feel sorry for his family. I feel sorry for Kane, man. Yeah, it's gotta be. I, a, I, I do too. You, you got to think he's probably sitting there going, what in the fuck did I do that for? Even though at the time you're like, no, this guy deserves it. Deserve it has nothing to do with it. Like mm-hmm. has nothing to do with it. But anyways, total subject change. But uh, well, I guess you said you're busy all weekend, huh, Josh? What do you got going on? Work stuff? Family uh, shit? Car shopping and a oh, bunch fun. of other not fun stuff. Yeah. Well, that sucks, man. <laughs> well, um. Hey, if you're in the area, come by the shop. Come on by. Uh, B, if you need something from me, man, let me know. For sure. Cool. Chris, uh, I guess I'll see you Saturday. I'll hopefully, I'll have the patch made for you. And uh, there's something else. I, oh, those shirts. I'll, I'll print them tonight. They're in, they're in my living room right, waiting for me. So I'll go print them tonight. I got plenty of space and time. So awesome, dude. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. If you're made it this far past the rantings of a madman. Um, <laughs> well, honestly, I just saw that we were like really short on our episode. And I was like, eh, I got plenty of time. So. All right, everybody. I'll see y'all later. Gosh, Chris, see y'all later. Yeah, peace.